Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. This is brought to you by Nature TTL, the best resource online for nature photographers. And today we're going to learn how to make a DSLR camera trap housing. So if you've seen all the rare photos of jaguars and pumas, armadillos, all these cool animals, or even things that are more locally common like badgers or foxes stalking around at night, then chances are they were taken on a camera trap. So if you're going to leave your camera out for days or weeks at a time, you're going to need some kind of housing to keep it safe from the weather. They're relatively easy to make, but there are a few things you're going to need to get first, so let's take a look at what they are. To ensure this is one tough camera trap housing, you'll need to use a Pelican case. The 1300 model will do the trick. The Manfrotto 394 Rapid Connect adapter with its corresponding plate will allow you to use your housing with a tripod. An 82mm ultraviolet filter will be used as the window. For hardware, you'll need an 86mm hold saw and adapter, I recommend Bosch, Tiger Seal to keep out the moisture, a drill and drill bit set, two roofing bolts and nuts, these should be 25mm in length and between 5 and 7mm in diameter. So first take out all of the foam. And now we've got this empty pelly box. So we're going to cut the window at the front now. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can either have it facing this way with the window at the front. And this has the added advantage that most cameras and most lens combinations fit. Or you can cut the hole here. And that gives you the advantage of opening the door to the back and then you can work the uh, LCD screen of the camera really easily. Whereas in this direction you have to kind of pick it up, work out what you're doing and put it back down again. So using this hole saw you have the centre point that goes in first and then the hole gets cut afterwards. So you need to mark on here where you want the diameter of the hole to be and the centre point so you know that you're not going to go off target. <laughs> So I've found my central point and I know where I'm going to cut it, but there is no going back from here, so do make sure you've got it right from the word go. And it's really just as simple as that. Okay, so next we're going to put on the tripod mount. And this is how you attach it to your tripod in position for camera trapping. Now I like to use this Manfrotto quick release plate. It's pretty big, which means it's balanced on the tripod with such a big and heavy contraption. Um, and it's really solid. They're really well made. They're not the cheapest quick release plates on the market, but they are definitely worth it. And they come with the added advantage that there is space to put two bolts in so you get no slipping. So to get your bolts, you need to go to any screw shop um, and take your plate with you and make sure that you get exactly the right measurement. All plates are different and you don't have to use this plate um, but you need to make sure the width is right to fit through and you need two points that you can drill through. So we're going to take this screw, we're going to put it through here and we're going to put another one through there. Now we're going to be drilling the plate onto the bottom of the box. This bit is what gets screwed onto the tripod and it lets you mount it straight onto it. So make sure you don't screw the wrong bit onto the box. You want to make sure this is pretty central on the box. If it's not, you could find that the weight of the box and the camera tips your tripod over and that's really not what you want when you're leaving the camera out for weeks on its own. So you need to make sure it's definitely as stable as possible. Now for this tripod plate, the bolts go in at the side. So we're not going to have, which would be ideal, um, a straight spread across here. But they've actually modified this plate. In the previous camera trap I made, there was space to drill um, another bolt through here, but they've changed it now but we can make it work with just two on one side because once one side pulls down, the other is the other screw's pulled against so it won't have any slippage anyway. So you've really got nothing to worry about. Now make sure you've got a drill bit that is the same width as your screw. We're using 25 millimeter long screws um, and any longer than that, you'll find that it, um, it interferes with the camera itself and you really don't want that to happen. So once you've got it central on the box, you literally just need to mark where the bolt is going to go and drill straight through the pelican case and then you can put the bolts through later and bolt them on with a nut on the other side. So 
So these pelly cases are pretty tough actually, and you do need to put some force on uh, for when you're drilling the hole here. It's different to the hole saw because that's got a lot more teeth, you need to be a bit more delicate with that, but this is literally just punched straight through the box. Now we've drilled the holes for the screws, it's really easy to bolt this on. Simply open up the box, and then you put the plate on the back, put the screw through, and then you're just going to need to bolt it on. So just make sure it's going on nice and tight. Now there's no chance of that slipping. It's already pretty much immovable with just one bolt in, but we can put another bolt in just for safety. Now in this case it only fits just through the plate, so I'm currently actually threading um, the metal of the plate, but that's not really an issue. So if it doesn't fit exactly, just force the screw through. You're never going to move it out again, so if you damage it a little bit then that's not really a problem. So now it'll just click straight onto your tripod. There you go. Simple. There are two ways that you might connect your camera to the flashes. Now you could do it wired or you could do it wireless. If you're doing it wireless then ignore this step. But if you are doing it wired like me, then you'll need to get your wire and check the diameter because you're going to be drilling some holes through the lid and the main bit of the box so that you can fit them out. Now you need the diameter to be pretty much exact, otherwise you're going to be losing the weatherproof feature of the Pelican case and that is what we've chosen it for. When I wire my camera trap, I'll be using a splitter, so I'll have three of these standard Ethernet cables coming out of the top of the camera as well as a sensor cable. Now they come out in front, to the right and the left, so I need to think about that when I'm making the holes. So I'm going to make three holes on the left hand side and we're making these between the lid and the box because if you do it in the box then it's really really fiddly and if you do it in the lid then it's the same problem but if you do it in between you can simply slot the cable in and then shut the lid on them and the box will bite down on the cable and you'll have that weather seal again. Now when you're drilling these holes just leave them evenly spaced apart between the two hinges of the box and just drill straight down this line here and don't worry too much about the weatherproof seal inside because the way it's closed the plastic will be pushing it up out of the way so you need to drill with it closed because then you have an even hole through both the lid and the box because there are two elements that cross each other in the middle So there we have it, we've got all of the holes for the wires. One, two, three, and then another one on the back, number four. Now once you drill the holes, you may find that the plastic doesn't quite uh, get removed entirely. So all you need to do is get a little hacksaw and just cut the plastic out. So now I've done that, the wires will just fit perfectly into the box. Just put them through there, you'd have your camera inside, you'd close up the box so you've got the wire coming straight out here and it bites down on it so that you're able to keep that weather seal. So now all that we need to do is put the window in and this is the 82mm filter that fits into the hole we cut with the hole saw. And you get this to stay in using sealant and that keeps the weather seal as well. So I'm a fan of Tiger Seal, it's pretty pungent stuff but it does do the job. Now you want to keep the filter safe from the sealant so all you need to do is put some paper on it uh, with a double sided piece of tape um, and keep it on there. Once you've got your sealant into the gun it literally is just a case of steadily putting a circle around the gap between the window and the filter and pretty much just hoping for the best. So now we're going to put the filter in, um, but we're going to obviously put some more sealant on once it's into place. Okay, so it is starting to take shape now. So just put in as much sealant as you can, and you'll need to go from both sides of the box to make sure it's really in there, so that when you leave it to dry for some hours, uh, it won't move. Now the sealant will start to go rubbery very quickly so all you need to do 
is move it so you get it in proper position and then make sure there's no gaps where you can see light through the other side. So there you go guys, this has been how to make a DSLR camera trap housing, a video brought to you by Nature TTL. Make sure you go and check out the website, we have heaps more tutorials, loads of cool stuff for you to do. Hit subscribe below and also check the description of this video, there's links to all the stuff you need to buy so you can make a housing just like this. So thanks for tuning in and see you next time. For more nature photography tips and tricks, subscribe to our channel and then head over to the Nature TTL website.